Hey guys, welcome to review of Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Now, this is an interesting movie. Uh, but before, before I start my review, I'm gonna take a moment to address the, uh, the sort of new Star Wars hate that has been like... What are they barking at? That, that, that has been flooding... Well, not flooding. I feel like it's a very vocal minority of the internet that is like, Rah, new Star Wars trilogy. Including, many, many, many of these people are my friends who are kind of iffy on this new trilogy. I just, I just kind of want to talk about that because I... I don't know. I don't get it. I think, there, I think there are a lot of people who take Star Wars... I, I mean, you... I'm, this isn't a call out on any specific person. If you, what's going on? This isn't a call out on any specific person. If you have legitimate reasons for not liking The Last Jedi, or for not liking the new series, that's fine. I'm not calling out any specific person. I'm just saying there are definitely, definitely some people who. Uh, Stop. I. There are definitely people who take Star Wars a little too seriously. I should probably just redo this whole take, but uh, I don't want to, so we're gonna keep going. Um, uh, like, I'm not calling out any specific person, but I just think there are a lot of people who take who take new st who take Star Wars a bit too seriously. I mean, these are, there's, it's kind of weird, because there's, like, two camps of this. Uh, I, I feel like there's people who are just, like, too, I don't, I don't know how to describe this. I guess there's just people who take Star Wars too seriously. I'll put it this way. I literally, one of my friends, after we walked out of The Last Jedi, said, this Star Wars movie wasn't meant to be taken seriously, like, other Star Wars movies, and I immediately was just like, um, hello, Jar Jar, and I know the prequels are kind of, like, dismissed or whatever, but I also think the original trilogy is kind of held on a ridiculous pedestal, I mean, on, on a ridiculous pedestal, like, it's not, it's not, it's, I mean, it's, they're, they're good, they're, I'd say they're great movies, except Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is just good. Uh, but, like, they're not, like, some sort of cinematic matter masterpieces, like, people think they are. And so, like, like I've just seen a lot of complaints about The Last Jedi. You know, I'm, I don't know if you know, but, like, the critic score for it on Rotten Tomatoes is very high, but the audience score is, like, low, because people are nitpicking it. And... It's just a lot of the complaints I've seen have been nitpicks. I understand why people did not like The Force Awakens. Uh, because it was pretty much a beat-for-beat beat repeat of A New Hope. There are some criticisms of it that I don't really agree with. I don't think Rey... I don't think, I don't think Rey beating Kylo Ren in a fight made her overpowered. Especially since this movie kind of acknowledges it. It's more... This, this movie actually, like, acknowledges that at one point, and is sort of just like... Like, it's more a statement on Kylo than it is a statement on Rey. Uh, I think I think the only problem I have with Rey is her per... Is she doesn't really have much of a personality. Like, and that doesn't change in The Last Jedi, if you're wondering. She's still... Like, they, they give her an interesting arc, and she's, like, sort of an interesting character, but she doesn't have much of a personality. Kylo Ren is the most... In is much more interesting character, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but I just, like... I just feel like it's kind of become the new cool hip thing to, you know, I'm, I don't like, I'm not like the rest of these people. I don't like these new Star Wars movies. The prequels were, were better because they at least had world building. And I mean, the, I, I like the prequels. I like the prequels fine. They're, the first two are good kids movies with certain elements of them that are really good. And the third one, Revenge of the Sith, is a, I think is a legitimately good movie. And most of its flaws only exist because of the first two movies. Uh, so I'm not I'm not a prequel hater or an original. I feel like there's too many either original trilogy purist or like 
ardent prequel defenders. That's Those are like the two camps of the new movie haters. The ones who hate the new movies because the prequels were more different, so I like them better. Uh, or, or the ones who are so purist about the original trilogy that, like, nothing can ever compete with them, if, if that makes any sense. And I think it's kind of a weird perspective thing, like, pe people have with these Star Wars movies coming out, where it's like, most people like them, but then there's, like, some, some vo very vocal minorities that just kind of go out of their way to hate them. I, I mean, I'm interested, I'm interested to see, like, in, in a couple years when the new trilogy's over, what people, I think, I think people are going to look back and see Last Jedi as, if not a very great Star Wars movie, then a very interesting Star Wars movie, which, and so now I, I'm going to transfer into my, uh, my Last Jedi review, which I thought was one of the, uh, the best Star Wars movies yet. Uh, in the theater, I was thinking it was my favorite, but I, I don't know if I can say that for sure without a reviewing and maybe a rewatch of some previous ones. I think it's easily the best since Emperor Empire Strikes Back. So basically, like second best. I, I actually put A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back on pretty much in like the same level to me. They're just as good as each other. And I think this is the best one since then, but uh I I've some negative I've seen some negative reactions, a lot of them from people I'm very close to and uh it's interesting to me. It's interesting how different a lot of the people that I've talked to's perspective have perspectives have been on this movie, and it makes me want to rewatch it more. Which I already was thinking, like, I want to rewatch this. Like, ne ne never before has a Star Wars movie made me feel like I need to rewatch it to fully judge it, because it, there's there's a lot of it that's like really complex. I mean, complex for a Star Wars movie, just kind of like, like sort of some ideological stuff that is a bit different than what you than the type of fare you normally get from Star Wars, and definitely, I feel like uh, needs a rewatch to kind of be fully absorbed and understood. Uh, and that's really good. I love that plot. Like, most of it has to do with uh, Ray, Luke, and Kylo. There's sort of a like connected story arc between the three of them that is really interesting. Probably some some of the most interesting material a Star Wars movie has ever done. And then there but and then there's there's other plot lines that aren't quite as interesting. And I that, I feel like there are two movies in this movie. There is there is one that is like the director's vision, the new director Ryan Johnson. I feel like he had a vision of what he wanted to do, sort of like break down the light side dark side dichotomy and talk about like the Force and the Jedi and that kind of stuff. It even even it even kind of justifies like like it ties into the prequel storyline a little bit in ways that I don't know. I don't want to go over. I'm probably going to do a more in-depth spoiler review after I see it a second time, if I, pro I probably will, uh, just, just to kind of go more in depth into my thoughts, but this is a very base, this is a baseline first impressions review, and, and a sort of message to Star Wars haters, I guess, like, why are you taking Star Wars so seriously? Even the original trilogy has its campy moments, and this movie, this movie definitely has its campy moments. One thing I will say that I've noticed with new Star Wars movies about Disney owning the rights now, the one kind of stamp where you can kind of tell it's Disney is, well, one, the obvious, like, they they always have some cute creature or something that can be used to sell toys, but whatever. I'm, usually that's in the background. Like, the, those Porg things that were marketed, the little little chicken bunny guys, they're barely in the movie. I They barely even re made, a, made a register on my brain. Like, which is good if you don't want to see them everywhere bad if you do want to see them a bunch. They're just kind of there. They're just kind of there. there. There's a funny little scene between them and Chewbacca where he's like eating one of them, where he's, where he's like roasted, killed and roasted one of them, and all the creatures are like, Arr! It's and it's cute, but like, I mean, it's just kind of there. It comes and goes. Uh, but like, this movie has its campy mo I feel I feel like there's a really serious storyline. There's one movie back to my original point, there's one movie, Ryan Johnson's sort of vision for it, that is, like, really interesting and takes some risk and does things with Star Wars that 
have never been done before. And then there's kind of another movie in there that is the Disney exec produced, put together, focus tested blockbuster with all the like knock on the like let's this, the new Star Wars movies have Marvel humor. Like there's no getting around it. Their humor it's not quite as like blatant as Marvel movies, but like they have that same style of Marvel humor. And I I have some friends who don't like that or who are like over that, tired of that, and it annoys them to see it in Star Wars. And I totally get that. I just think at least especially for this movie, more so than The Force Awakens even, that felt like a minor part of the movie. And if anything, I'd say that's probably the weakest. There there's there's a second movie, there's a second movie in this movie. That is that is like a mar almost like a, a a fun action comedy Marvel type movie set in the Star Wars universe, and that's not bad. It's fun, but it's definitely the weaker thing going on. And there's there's every every time they would cut back to that because they kind of have two intersecting stories. They have Rey on the island with Luke, and it kind of ties into Kylo, and then they have Finn and this new character named Rose, who I was not a fan of. Uh, going on this quest to find this, like, code breaker guy who, uh, who's supposed to, like, help, who's supposed to help them, uh, I'm not gonna go too into detail, but there's something they need to shut down on one of the Star Destroyers that is keeping them, that is keeping the Resistance in trouble that they need to go in and shut down, and they need this guy to do it. And the whole plot, the whole plot line, I mean, it's interesting. They have to go to, like, this casino planet, so it's kind of fun. But the whole plot line's kind of just messy for ways that, in like, messy, and it all kind of ends up being pointless by the end of the movie. I was hoping, when they started talking about the Code Breaker and they went to this casino planet, that the Code Breaker would be Lando from, from Empire Strikes Back. That would have made the plot line worth it. Like, like, if you're gonna drag these characters to this unrelated casino planet just to find some dude that's gonna help them with one simple thing, you should, like, you should at least, like, make it, m make, give, give the fans something to be invested in during this sequence, because that's the problem. They keep cutting back to this casino planet, going to the casino planet storyline in between the Rey and Luke and Kylo stuff, and every time they cut back to it, I'm like, this is good, this would be a fun spin-off movie, but I really want to see that other stuff because it's really interesting. And this is not as interesting. Uh, and that's that's just kind of, I'd say if that's easily the movie's biggest weakness. It's just sort of the Finn Rose storyline and like cutting back to that and it's just kind of like, this would be fine in its own movie, but I want to see the more deep stuff that's going on in this other plot line, and it kind of feels like some of that, and the, the movie's long. I, I probably, I should have mentioned this earlier, but like the movie is two and a half hours long, and it feels it. There are basically two climaxes in this movie. I'm not gonna talk about them, but there are basically two climaxes. Both are really good, but by the second one I was like, when is this movie ending? <laughs> this movie just keeps going, it, and going, and going, and going. And I think, I think it could have been trimmed down a lot. Cut out some of the like, cutesy animals or like marvel style stop the movie jokes uh, or and cut cut down this casino the dumb casino planet plot line a little bit trim it down condense it cut out the casino entirely honestly i don't care that much it the casino does have a sick remix of the moss Eisley cantina theme playing in the background of it though which is pretty good i'll, I'll give it that but it's just kind of like there's there's definitely some of the fat that could have been trimmed out of this movie that i feel like because the movie's so long, it somehow has time to be, the, like, the most serious Star Wars movie yet, and also one of, and also, like, really sort of Marvel-esque action comedy type thing. It has time to be both, and they don't interfere too much, but I kind of wish they had just picked one, if that makes any sense. I kind of wish they had just either... I kind of wish they had just committed one way or another because it ends up feeling kind of wishy-washy. Even the morals it tries to talk about with the Jedi and the dark side and sort of that Luke doesn't wants the Jedi to end, even that ends up being kind of mushed up and a little Disney-fied with the way the plot lines are mixing. And that's probably, I'd say, the movie's big weakness is that there's just sort of two conflicting movies in this one movie. And one of them is really good and one of them is all right. But, 
And, and uh, okay, if you like Star Wars for the action scenes, the action scenes in this movie are some of the best. The movie opens with this awesome action scene where Poe and his fighters are fighting this, like, Star Destroyer thing. It's Dreadnought, I think is what they called it, like a really big one. And they have to drop bombs on it, and it, it's, it gets really intense at a certain point. That's what I actually think in this, the... There's there's a there's a sort of a third plot line which yeah this movie is very crowded uh, with Poe and Leia on a resistant ship and they're fleeing from Empire from Empire ships for like the whole movie and it really sort of exemplifies the sort of like like it for the first time I feel like these this war that goes on in Star Wars is actually a war because you see every step of their war like what are we gonna do next to get away from them what are we gonna do and I really liked that. There was a lot of unique things to this movie, like that. Small things that I really liked, that I feel like a lot of them I can't go... That's that's why I feel like I want to make a second video on this after watching it a second time, because there's just a lot of interesting stuff. And some of it's divisive stuff. Like, it's not going to please everybody. They, they, they shut down... In this movie, they shut down pretty much every, like, fan theory that's been floating around. Like... They kind of, they, they buck tradition in this movie. There, there are plot beats that remind me of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, but everything is twisted and turned in such a unique and interesting way from my perspective that I just really like it. If you've been, I can see why some people who've been theorizing and wanted to know this and that and this and wanted this out of this movie, you're not going to get what you specifically asked for. It's kind of a case of like, this I, this sounds kind of pretentious, but like the director has a vision. He doesn't <laughs> care what the audience wants so much. He's gonna, but he's gonna give the audience what they don't know they want. I guess if that. I mean that for some people that's not gonna. They're just not gonna like it. That's a, this is seems like it's gonna be a divisive movie. Like fans will either love it or hate it, and I'm I'm pretty firmly on the love it side, despite its flaws and its like sort of weird branching storylines that don't always don't always go anywhere. I'd recommend you go see it. Like, even if you didn't like The Force Awakens, in fact, I'd recommend you go see it more because this one, this one twists things in a way The Force Awakens didn't. Now, J.J. Abrams is directing episode nine, so I feel like he's gonna twist it back to the normal, which, eh, it's kind of unfortunate, but, you know, what can you do about that? It doesn't affect the quality of The Last Jedi, really. Oh, I should probably talk about, it's hard to talk about Kylo without spoilers, but, Suffice it to say, if you saw episode 7 and you were worried about Kylo, that he was going to be a crappy character, no. Kylo is probably one of the most interesting characters in the whole trilogy. It's hard to, can't really go into it without spoiling things, but he's like, he's, he's very, very complex in ways that you wouldn't expect. And they ta they're taking some directions with him, and, and him and his whole origin that's related to Luke is one of the most interesting things in the movie. And, uh... I don't know. It's a, it's there's a lot of interesting stuff in this movie and I recommend you go see it for for that. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to rewatching it although I'm don't really not really looking forward to sitting through some of the excessive like casino planet subplots and all that. It's it's kind of, I feel like Force Awakens was a more enjoyable rewatch than this movie probably will be, but I do want to rewatch it at some point and uh, follow up with a sort of more spoiler, more spoilers review. But uh, yeah, go see it. It is good. Do, 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 do.